Hi, welcome back to another episode of PSLE Science Made Simple. I'm Mr. Joshua, and I'm a PSLE Science Specialist here at the Peak Lab. In this video, I'll be analyzing a past year exam question. I've also prepared this question for you to download for free by clicking a link in the description box below. So let's get started. Question 1. Raja created a model of the water cycle in the experiment as shown below. He put a glass beaker in a container of water and covered it with a plastic sheet. Next, he put some ice cubes on the plastic sheet. And the question is asking, which part of the water cycle does the salt water in the container represent? So the diagram on the top shows us a model of the water cycle. So in order to understand how this model works, we first have to understand how does the water cycle work? Let's focus on the diagram at the bottom. I'm going to focus on the seas and lakes first. This is what we call the water bodies on Earth. So which state of matter do you think these water bodies are in? Are they solid, liquid, or gas? They are in liquid state. Now in this diagram, it shows us that the water bodies is going to turn into water vapor. And water vapor is in which state? Gaseous state. So how did we go from liquid to gas? The water in the water bodies must have gained heat from the sun to evaporate and form this water vapor. Then, in this diagram, it shows us that the water vapor turns into clouds. Does anyone know what clouds are made up of? Clouds are made up of tiny water droplets. And these tiny water droplets are in which state? They are in the liquid state. So what heat process did this gaseous water vapor undergo to turn into liquid water droplets? It must have underwent condensation. Then when the clouds accumulate a lot of these tiny water droplets, the clouds start to become very heavy and they will turn into rain. Now which state is rain in? Rain is also in the liquid state. So from clouds to rain, was there any change in state? No, there wasn't any change in state. So this means that no heat process took place. Now finally, the rain will fall back into the water bodies and this whole cycle repeats itself. So this water cycle actually explains how on Earth, there is a continuous supply of water for living organisms to survive. So now that we're done analyzing the water cycle, let's take a look at the model of the water cycle that Raja has created. And let's try to match which part of this model represents the parts that we've just analyzed in the water cycle. So which part of this model represents the seas and lakes? It's going to be the salt water. So the water in the salt water is going to evaporate to form water vapor. Now in order for the water in the salt water to become water vapor, it must have gained heat. And where do you think it's going to gain heat from? it's probably gaining heat from the sun. So the sun is the heat source in this model. Now I want you to take notice of my phrasing. Why is it that I'm saying the water in the salt water evaporates? Why am I not saying that the salt water evaporates? Recall, salt water is made up of two things. It's made up of salt and water. Do you think the salt will be able to evaporate? No, it won't be able to evaporate. But do you think the water is able to evaporate? Yes, the water is able to evaporate. So therefore, we must say the water in the salt water evaporates, not the salt water evaporates. So let's move on. We know that this warmer water vapor is going to rise up and come into contact with the cooler underside of this plastic sheet, lose heat to it, and condense to form tiny water droplets. So these tiny water droplets represent what in the water cycle? It actually represents the clouds. And since this plastic sheet is sloping, the tiny water droplets will slide down the middle and drip into the glass beaker to be collected as water. Just like how rain drips down from the clouds. So not only do these tiny water droplets represent the clouds, they also represent the rain. And finally, let's take a look at the water collected in the glass beaker. Do you think that the water collected is pure water or is it salt water? It's going to be pure water. But why is it pure water? Remember, only the water in the salt water was able to evaporate. So what's going to be collected in the glass beaker is pure water. 
and the salt is going to be left in the container beside the beaker. So now we can answer the question, which part of the water cycle does the salt water in the container represent? It actually represents the seas and lakes. So therefore, the answer for this question is option number one. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Found this video useful? Give us a thumbs up and check out more by clicking the links here. You can also subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Until next time, stay curious inside and limitless outside. Bye!